so every topic or every talk needs a starting hypothesis, and uh, mine is going to be pretty simple. Um, it's going to be that corporate or enterprise security sucks. Okay, and uh, some of us have been saying this for a while, but for a really, really long time, um, lots of people were living in denial. Okay, because, and, and it's a really strange thing. I'm full of puns, like full of bad puns. <laughs> um, it's an interesting thing because the signs were all around us, but, but lots of people uh, still refused to believe. And it may have been difficult to believe back in 2010, but these days, it's a lot easier to believe, okay? Because um, if you look around, you should see that even though you've got all these megacorps that have been spending bigly on security, um, almost nobody's been able to, to get anything right. And, and then what was left was not just for the security teams, but for the offensive security teams to feel a little smug, okay? Because um, the thinking was, that you know, what we do is we'd go around and we'd tell people what they should be doing and point out how they should be protecting themselves. And one of the unspoken truths um, that, that people have started to realize is that if you're on the red team, for the most part, your job's just a whole lot easier. Okay, the bar was so low that red teamers for a really long time started thinking we were geniuses. Right? Every pen test that we did worked, every social engineering exercise that we did worked. And if only those defenders would do their jobs as well as we were doing our jobs, everything would be fixed. Okay? But, but the honest thing is that the odds were incredibly stacked in our favor. And, and probably the, the best articulation of this came from Dan Gear, who pointed out that, that we all run around doing the security stuff when for the most part, uh, we're just hoping that the attacks don't happen on our watch, okay? And, and I guess for that, the honest truth is that hope uh, shouldn't be your strategy. Um, if I'm quoting Dan Gear, I've got to quote uh, Brian Snow. Um, and Brian Snow gave this talk uh, many years back at a conference in Malta. Um, and, and he had this excellent quote which, which said something like, your cyber systems continue to function and serve you not um, due to the skills of your security staff, but due to the sufferance of your opponents. And I think Brian Snow was a little early for that sort of thing, like we weren't ready to hear the message, kind of like uh, Marcus Ranum was uh, in many ways. But, but what's interesting is, since they made these statements, things have only actually gotten worse. Because if you consider it, um, for years and years, we suffered trying to secure a computer, okay? And nowadays, even your computer is multiple computers, okay? And, and the obvious example that I'm giving there is, uh, for those of you with a shiny Mac with a fancy touch bar, you should know that your touch bar is effectively like watch OS, so it's a whole new OS uh, running on your computer. Um, but but it's more than just this, right? Your hard drives have processors now. Almost everywhere you look, um, there are processors. And, and one of the examples that I like quoting, I'm not sure how many of you saw this example, but at some point, uh, a little Mac independent software development company were trying to figure out why they were getting MPEG artifacts when using the DVI adapter. And essentially, they cut up the DVI adapter and found uh, inside an ARM processor and two gigs of RAM. Okay, so, so your uh, DVI adapter is actually a computer also. Okay, and, and that stuff just gets worse and worse. Um, Alex INSQ pointed out that every modern monitor is an x86 computer. Bunny and Zobs pointed out that 20 cents SD cards have processors running on them that can be backdoored and subverted. Okay, so we had trouble when we just had one computer, and now everywhere we look, there's a computer, and uh, we're not exactly scaling up in terms of the number of people we add to defend against this problem. 